Welcome to the first in the series of Gold Speak Women features. And uh, tonight we have with us Love and Relationship Coach out of the UK, United Kingdom, Heather Garbutt. And Heather is a very, very, very critical part of many women's lives today as she is a love and relationship coach, as I mentioned before. This year, as we celebrate Women's History Month, we definitely want to turn the spotlight on something that never usually takes the forefront for women on International Women's Day or International Women's History Month, because somehow the focus always seems to be on what women can do more, which fields of engineering they can go into more, what new business they can have more. And it's all about how we can function more in this world. All the while forgetting about the woman's special skills and unique abilities as a feminine being in this world. As the woman that she is, as unique as she is, is able to function and give on to this world. So we want to take a focus today in this feature on love and what it means to have love, to be loving whilst being a woman. Because we've had so many stories over the years. Thank you so much, Heather, for being with me today. It's really my pleasure to have you so that we can have this wonderful, beautiful conversation about love and what it means for women, to women, about women, and how we as women can embrace that thing called love. Welcome. Thank you so much. Oh, crazy little thing called love. Yeah. Crazy little thing <laughs> called love. I mean, I hear that wars have been started over it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? And you know what? What I am discovering, Heather, is that we are, as women, just recently, and when I say recently, I mean really recently, in the late 90s, coming through to the 2000s, you know, we're just lately now beginning to embrace and look at the topic of love in our lives, understanding exactly what that is supposed to mean. As a relationship mm -hmm. coach, what does love mean to you. Mm. I like to just pick up on that point about how recent it is that we can really take this into consideration. For so much of our history, we have been part of creating property alliances or somehow survival alliances. We have chosen our partners, you know, in the traditional way, if we're looking at men and women, to provide for us and protect us, give us children in return. We've given them all of the backup, all of the emotional care. We've given them children and we've given them sex. It's been an exchange for survival and procreation. But we don't have that now. Love is much, much bigger. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, love is here now. You inviting me here is an act of love. Mm -hmm. And me accepting your invitation is receiving that love and giving it back, which may sound like an exchange, but it's much more in rapport, mm -hmm. which I love, love, love. <laughs> so <laughs> what is love? I think it's a, it's a huge thing, but I think it starts... From, from the inside out, from self-love. As women, we're brought up and we're, we're naturally hardwired to care for everybody else. And that is really quite a difficult thing to go against the tide of. But if we don't, we're running on empty. If we don't actually prioritize ourselves, we're running on empty. 
So we need to be listening to our feelings and needs. There's a, a little meditation, which if you, with your permission, I'd quite like to do. So everybody has it. This is what I do when I shut the bathroom door. So I've got two minutes to myself and I just go in, I put my hand on my heart. I'm try it. Do you want to try it with me? Yeah. Yes, 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 certainly. And lovely ladies listening, if you would try this too, if you're in a safe place to do so, not driving. <laughs> so take a breath. Right down into your tummy so you can feel those tummy muscles soften a bit. Just notice any tension in your body. It might be that you're carrying a weight on your shoulders, burdens of responsibility. It might be that you're carrying a pain in your heart, that there's fear or anxiety about people in your life or yourself or a situation. It might be that you're carrying nervousness in your tummy. And something's gnawing away at you. Just notice all of these things. And ask yourself, in the kindest tone. Darling, what are you feeling? And listen for your reply. <laughs> right now I'm feeling anxious because I'm at the start of a talk and it's a free-flowing thing and I have no idea what Totlin is going to ask me next. And I love that. It feels like surfing. And it scares the daylights out of me. <laughs> so it's funny as well. Yeah. I feel humor. So then I say back to myself, ah, oh, I see that you're feeling excited. You can feel the humor of this situation. You're a little bit anxious. You're a little bit scared and you're a little bit thrilled. Yeah, I see all of that in you. And then you say again, and what else are you feeling, honey? What else? Take a breath and listen to yourself. And at the moment, I'm feeling a great stillness that's in and around all of that, that is open and welcoming. It feels like a bigger love than me and a bigger place than me. And that this connection is meant and I feel at home here. And I respond to myself. All right, I see that too. I see that you feel there's something so much bigger, so much calmer and steadier here. You feel at home here in this loving connection. I see that's what you're feeling. Then you might ask yourself that a few more times. And then you move into, and so, honey, tell me what you need. So what do you need? In this moment, I need this lovely connection. I need to contain that anxiety and to love myself and be kind. If I make mistakes in my words, I can just correct them. I need to reassure myself and really embrace this wonderful opportunity to speak with you all, to impart some wisdom. And in my hope that this will be really beneficial to you. And then you say, yeah, okay. I see all of those things that you're needing to stay calm, to embrace this situation, to impart your wisdom and be of benefit and of service. I see that. 
So you go through that and you ask yourself again, what do I need? As many times as you need to. And it gives you an idea in the moment of what your intuitive feelings are telling you, what your gut's telling you, what your heart's telling you. Helps you get inside and still. So you know what you need. It might be what you need to do. It might be what you need to have. It might be what you need to be. And it might be that you can't meet those needs right now. But at least you know what they are. When you're ready, if you feel you want to open your eyes now, that'd be good. That is so calming. That's such a beautiful entry into our wonderful connection and exchange here on this day. I love it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's it's a uh, it's a thing um, that Catherine Woodward Thomas developed. She mm. calls it the inner sanctuary of safety, mm. or self love power practice. Mm. I am already loving it. I'm already mm. feeling up my love of self even more, and mm. I love the vulnerability that it gives us. I love the openness that it gives us. I'm enjoying that tremendously. As you mentioned in that practice, Heather, you're saying, oh, you're feeling anxious because you don't know what I'm going to ask. I'm so glad for your vulnerability being open because I'm here to tell you, you're the expert on you and your field. And there is nothing <laughs> that I could ever ask you that you don't already know the answer to. That's so true. Enjoy that feeling. <laughs> I'm only the expert at Gold Speak Woman. I'm not a relationship coach, although my friends tell me you should be a relationship coach. I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it really does start with you. There is a wonderful prayer of, I think it's St. Francis of Assisi. Um, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. So mm. the idea of love, I know many, many women in our world today and in the past, some have dead and gone, that one of the things that they needed most in their lives, despite all their accomplishments, is love. And they're always seeking outside of themselves for this love whether it is in a love relationship with a love partner or wanting to receive more love from their grown children or their family members. Mm -hmm. But in this exercise, what you've pointed out to us is that love really begins with me. It begins inside of us. How do we know? How can we identify that the search we are on, the quest we are on, is that for love? Because it can be so obscure, Heather, that you are, you know, you're shopping a lot, you're working a lot, you're studying a lot, you're going for the next uh, real estate deal, or, you know, you're trying to get in, in, involved in this group and trying to belong, trying to be heard. How do I, as a woman seeking, recognize that what I'm truly seeking is love and primarily self-love? Mm. I think all of those things are really commendable. They're beautiful and we need women to be doing all of those things in the world. And at the same time, you can't find your answers there. They're coming from a place of lack inside if, if mm -hmm. we are needing love. And that place of lack is part of our culture. It's a sort of endemic thing in our culture. I think we're just beginning to realize how much we need emotional understanding and support. So from children, we need to have somebody that we can go to, speak for myself, I need somebody that I can go to as a child who will take me in their arms and I know that I'm safe. Who will ask me what I need, what I feel, what I want, what are my ambitions, and work with me 
to calm whatever feelings of distress there are and to nurture whatever feelings of excitement and reaching out there are for fulfillment. And will work with me on a practical level, um, do things for me, do things with me, spend time with me, listen to me so that I can fulfill upon those. And if I hit stumbles on the road, like you will, you go to school, there's somebody you don't like or a teacher has a go at you, you know, you come home, you're upset. That's what you need is that sitting down and holding. And if we can do that for our children and lovingly be accountable, oh gosh, the test didn't go so well. What happened? What do you need? What do you feel? So let's hear what you feel. Not sort of taking over, but to really tune in. Find what the children need for their support and then give that to them and help them. You know, if, if what they need to do is talk to the teacher and say, I felt disrespected yesterday, we help them go and do that. And we either accompany them to support them or we ask them how it went. You know, we're their backstop, we're their main backup. So they learn that they've got real security with us. And then we'll have real security with them as adults. They will have security. They'll know what they feel and need. They'll know to look for support. They'll know what their ambitions are. They'll know how to negotiate. They'll know how to explain their feelings to somebody else, which is the cornerstone of really healthy relationships and personal fulfillment. Yes. And if... if yeah. Do you want to say a bit? No, no, no. I'm just listening. And I'm liking how you're breaking it down because we don't hear this often enough. We don't hear this often enough. Now in our modern times, with the plethora of information we have at our fingertips or being thrown at, thrown at us as we scroll through our television channels or we scroll online. Sometimes we, we happen down a rabbit hole on a topic that catches our attention. The next thing we know, we're, we're, you know, we're reading about how, how to fix roses in a vase when all we did was started by looking at well, how can I make my appointment for my eye doctor, you know? So, <laughs> so I like the step-by-step -step that you are laying out for us. Because for you as a psychotherapist of 35 years, you you yourself thought that you had done all the inner work that you needed to do. And you woke up to find that, you know what? I I I, I need to experience new new levels of insight and skills and aptitude and attitude in terms of creating this real loving true relationship so let's shine the spotlight a little bit on your own life walk your own personal experience of discovering the need to do exactly and be exactly and to have exactly as you have just described to us especially after this very awesome uh practice of that self-work let's let, let let's start off with a little bit of your personal story because you got married when you're in like about in your mid 30s you know walk us through what 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 occurred for you okay well the the piece that I was just describing you know all of that loving attention was uh sparse and unreliable in my early life mm -hmm. it's not my parents fault it wasn't in the the culture then to to know that your children needed you emotionally and they might explain things to me and they did lots for me. You know, there was always food on the table and clean clothes and all of that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of emotional development and in terms of fulfillment of ambition, there wasn't that. There was high expectation uh, that I would do something really good in the world, mm -hmm. but I shouldn't do it by being visible or being loud or assertive <laughs> or wanting of any wealth. So, I mean, that's sort of tying your ankles together and saying, run, really, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not by any ill intent. No, they they really did love me. But now well, there you go. So let me tell you a bit about my early history, and then I'll come into my, my marriage and all of that. 
my early history, I was born to older parents who had always wanted children. Mm -hmm. And my sister was born after 13 years. Mm -hmm. And she was a sort of miracle child. So they never expected to have me. Mm. And then they had me and I was a breech birth, which was difficult for my mom, you can imagine. Yes. Um, and caused her to have depression. So she wasn't very emotionally available for me, even in the holding terms that we talked about a minute ago. And because of the, the birth, I had an injury, a dislocated hip. Mm. And so I was hospitalized at about 15 months. And that meant that I developed a sense of myself as being somebody alone and far away from the people who cared for me. And that's the pattern that got set in my emotional life relationships. Oh. So these early patterns, the earliest events, even things you don't know about, can set you up. Mm. So in my love life, I chose people who weren't particularly emotionally available, mm -hmm. um, who were quite needy themselves. Um, again, un un unevolved emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, because of my mom's depression, I learned to look after her, sort of watch out for how she was. Yes. Um, so there's the, the sort of precursor of the psychotherapist in me. And that's how I learned to be, is to be alone, look after other people. So in relationship, I was essentially alone, cared for other people. I had long distance relationships because my people were always a long way away. Mm -hmm. Or if they were close by, uh, they were unavailable, you know, either occupied elsewhere, which I'm not proud of. But as a teenager, I did have relationships with people who were in other relationships. Mm -hmm. And... Later on, I chose somebody who was quite a remote person. Mm. Even though we were together, he was very... Absent. Yeah. Yes, absent, self-involved. Yes. And, and that's not to be unkind. He knows now yeah. that he was on the Asperger spectrum. Mm. So that's not a meeting of minds when you've got somebody as sort of free-flowing and in the feminine as me to have somebody in the extreme masculine. Okay. So... Yeah, that was, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it worked for a good long time, mm -hmm. but eventually it, it came to a halt. Yes, uh, because it could not sustain itself. No, there wasn't enough connection. Yes, there wasn't. It's like, it's like you know, when you have a, a plug in a socket, in a wall socket, and if the prongs are not fitting correctly in that socket, there is no charge, there's no electricity, there's no currency. So mm. the light cannot come, you know, heat cannot come, nothing happens. So you need to have these connections. Now, nowadays we have the, um, it's now becoming more comfortable in our world, more acceptable in our world to seek therapy, to seek emotional support for a neutral party because you go to a friend, a friend knows you for the last 20 years. Ah, uh, you'll never get such and such because such and such, you're such and such or a family member. Oh, well, you know, that will never work. They never work. That never works. That relationship never works. Oh, women are horrible, you know, and men are mm -hmm. horrible. No, that girl is not for you. No, that man is not for you. So you have all of these voices talking at you. All of these voices, some of them sound truer than your own inner voice. Mm. So absolutely. I, yeah. You know, so you think you figure you're fine. You look in the mirror as a woman and uh, you're not struggling. You know the right makeup to wear. You know where to go to get the right gynecologist. Since we are talking about women stuff, we mm. know where to find the right clothes. We know how to buy the right size bra. We know whether we should exercise at yoga or run or jog or just meditate. We know that uh, we like certain foods as opposed to others. But I personally have found it very difficult and confusing to identify when is it that you need what you do need emotionally? 
And as I have my discussions with my other woman friends, my female friends, even younger women who I see now on social media and the things they're talking about, I'm like, hmm, you're not quite sure where you fit right now. And you're just following the crowd. How do we as women come into the realization? Do we have to wait until a crisis happens? The divorce happens. You know, you and your friends fall out. Um, or is this something that we have to, how do we know? How do we know, Heather? Well, we need to get really in touch with that inner voice. You know, the feelings and needs practice is a cornerstone for absolutely everything healthy in our emotional life. And what we would do for a child that I just described a minute ago, we need to do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, if we're looking for relationships, Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking from our child self like I was. I am alone. So I would choose relationships that made it impossible for me to be together because it wasn't safe for me emotionally. And all of these early ways of being I'm not quite sure I'm answering your question, but um, yeah, all, mm. OK, all of these early ways of being color how we relate. And that can be in any walk of our life, in our relationships and our relationship with money in our relationship with work, in our relationship with our children, with our friends, with our family. Yes. But they're there, they're alive. And the work is to help that little child in you grow up. Mm. So you tune into that really wise, higher self, your best self, mm. your wisest self, and ask this little one what they feel, what they need. Mm. Okay. So I've got you now. You don't have to ask this man to love you. You don't have to go to bed with this man to feel love. I've got you now. I've got you now. Mm. And from there, if you can create that security, and, you know, this is not easy work because the, the protections, the I am alone for me protection, is hard to let go of because it's based on fundamental lack of trust that people weren't trustworthy mm. with the best of intentions, but I couldn't trust them. So I've taken that into the world. Other people will take, I'm not good enough. I don't belong. I'm not worthy of love. I'm unlovable. I'm invisible. Uh, I'm not valuable. I don't matter. Different core beliefs. We, we live and act from those. We will get more of the same. Yes. So this growth is inner work. And if we can grow, we can grow from the grown up part of ourselves and bring the little one with us, help her feel safe so that she doesn't have to be giving parental power to the other people and things in her life. Does I that love, make sense? It makes perfect sense to me. And the beautiful thing is that whoever is watching, if they don't grasp it the first time around, you can always pause, go back listen to it, go back to the beginning of our presentation and do that exercise. And we must meet ourselves. We must meet ourselves because as a coach, as you're a coach and as you're a psychotherapist, you don't have the answers for us because we have very unique experiences. Mm -hmm. But as an experience, experienced guide you can lead us in the direction that we need to go absolutely love this loving this mm -hmm. loving this so your story didn't end with a divorce and that oh now you're lonely you didn't get it right uh snap <laughs> mm, no 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 sorry god um, beautiful yeah. yeah and we closed our relationship well and fairly the only thing I would have argued about was our dog. And he didn't argue with me about that. So I got to keep the dog, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> no, it didn't. Um, no, I, I was just, I'm divided because there was another piece I was going to say. The um, the feelings and needs meditation is on my website. I think it's podcast number 12 or 14. I think it's 12. So right. if people want to go through that, then they don't have to do it for themselves. They can listen to it. Right. it'd be useful so yeah um 
for myself, I took up dancing. My business partner and I just took up modern jive and we had a whale of a time. And I dated a number of people from there, but it wasn't the right fit. I could feel it wasn't the right fit. And I found myself trying to shoehorn myself into relationships that weren't the right fit. And fortunately for me, the men knew that it wasn't the right fit and didn't stay with me. Otherwise, I could have contorted myself to try and fit because I didn't want to be alone. Not necessarily. Yeah. No, no. no. And uh, if I had $10 for every woman that's doing that in the world, whoo. I don't know. You can I you and I could be the next visitors on the moon, you know? I know, easily. Saturn even. Oh no, no. <laughs> Saturn would burn us up. <laughs> yes, that is so true. That is so so true. Um, so many people in life, so many people in life really, and it's not their fault. It's just the way the world is constructed. But it becomes your fault when you become aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I prefer to use the, the word responsibility. Thank you. Because I, I don't want us to blame ourselves. You know, we've done the best with what we were given. Yes. And now we're awake. We can begin to choose differently. Yes. And what we need to do is get really clear on what we want. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the piece in Calling in the One is setting an intention. It's a really familiar thing in mm-hmm. coaching. So I I took calling in the one at that time i uh, i woke up it was a valentine's morning uh 2016 and i found myself alone and you know you get all this stuff coming into your inbox happy valentine's day and all of that and i thought i'm never ever going to wake up on valentine's day alone and it was like that i made an intention with the universe that's where i'm going nowhere else <laughs> it was like woo that was big and then i opened an email that said do you want to create a miracle in your love life? Yes. Just a beautiful line. Still gives me the chills, you know. So I, I did calling in the one. I got coaching for myself. Mm-hmm. And it's honestly, I thought I'd done loads of psychological work. I've been in therapy most of my adult life. It's one of the things you need to do to be a psychotherapist. And I obviously had big issues. So I got support with them. But yeah. this just was revolutionary for me. Mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. so different from anything I'd experienced before it was future focused with that intention you know what is it you want mm-hmm. and my intention was something like to be in a mutually committed loving honest trustworthy true fit romantic relationship and I put a date on it uh, I can't remember the date but I met my current partner, who I think is going to be a permanent one, <laughs> in uh, within six weeks of that intention. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. If you were to name three outstanding highlights when you woke up, on that Valentine morning and you set your intention, if you were to name three outstanding highlights of that process that brought you into your intentions, that brought you into living with inside of your intentions in real time in the real world, what would those three most outstanding highlights be for you? The, the initial piece was really understanding my patterns in love and where they came from. Then really getting a strong vision. I love making visions, you know, recording a vision. It's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. I can close my eyes and do it now. <laughs> when you say okay. recording a vision, what do you mean? Um, visualizing or actually recording it on, 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 on a recording device, listening back. Yeah, I record it. Let, let's do one now, okay? Yeah. And we'll, we'll combine it with an intention and we'll give it to your lovely listeners, okay? So it's September 2023 and I am so grateful that all of the women who have heard this recording have made leaps and bounds progress in their self-love, in their joy in love, in their relationship lives, 
with their wealth, with their work, with their children, with their families. They have risen up and woken up and are making big influence in the world. They are part of a wave of love. And we can see this by how many people just smile to each other every day. Even in the cities where people are more austere, there are so many more smiles. There are so many more smiles. I want you to imagine just for a moment walking down a familiar street, smell the familiar smells, hear the familiar sounds, whether it's traffic or the wind in the trees, whether it's flowers or the smell from a coffee shop. Feel your steps on the floor and open your eyes to see people coming towards you, might be walking their dogs or just going to work and they're smiling at you and you're smiling back. It's a warm, friendly smile and you can feel it in your heart. It's the shortest distance between two people. A smile. There's eye contact. There's warmth. There's just that little sparkle of joy that gives you a thrill. Mm. And that's the vision of true delight. But that's my wish for you. And I ask this for the good of all concerned, but most especially for you who is listening to this now. And I thank God, the universe source, for all the good that is coming to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I saw so many exciting things when I listened to that. That's so exciting. I'm loving it. Yes. <laughs> so if if people want to do that, all you have to do is write yourself some bullet points. Yes. And give yourself some descriptors, you know, like sound of your feet, the smell, what you can see, whatever it is that is around you, and put yourself there and then notice your feelings. Give yes. yourself what you want and what you feel. I can definitely see that. I can definitely feel that. I can definitely... uh fall in love with that i can definitely fall in love with that similarly you can sit in meditation um some people are scared of the word meditation because oh my mind won't sit still i don't know what i'm doing it doesn't feel right every time i start to sit in silence my mind goes to what i'm cooking for dinner or or oh i need to pick up the clothes from the dry cleaners <laughs> you know but mm -hmm. It calls for mindfulness, I would believe. It calls for these more esoteric things that we need to pay attention to because we're not just bodies and genders and activities and careers and goals and aspirations, but we are emotionals, all of us. And that's one yeah. of the things I realize, Heather, that people don't seem to uh, recognize so easily. And again, it's just our human history where mm -hmm. people have emotions. I have been at fault to think that there are some folks in this life who don't have any emotions. They behave like it. They look like it. But the truth is we are all emotional. They love to accuse women, accuse women of when they're expressing themselves, what we call passionate passionately oh you're so emotional well that's mm -hmm. a part of who we are we are emotional how come we don't call the rain emotional when the rain the rain can fall lightly the rain can fall heavily it can come in spurts it can come down like needles it can fall like a big waterfall it's doing all the different physical formations of being emotional we don't call the rain or water, emotional. The water is not sitting quietly in your cup, but it's falling from the sky rapidly. You don't mm. look outside and say, 
Hey, water. Why are you acting so emotional? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no. It's interesting, though, because there are levels, I think. Just thinking about this off the top of my head. I think we get more emotional when we get triggered. And we get triggered when um, those those key beliefs about ourselves come to light. So that could be when I really feel alone, when my partner's really, really busy. It, it's like when I was at home with my mom and I feel left out and forlorn. Um, and that's when I, I can get shouty and say, will you just stop doing that? Come and talk to me. I'm trying to tell you something, you know? Um, and that's that's not how I would want to be. I am being emotional, but I'm being triggered from a young place. Yeah. And that's very different from being uh, emotional, say, from a reaction to injustice. Right. That That's being triggered, but it's from a healthy place. And I might be emotional about that, you know, wow. seeing our government at the moment trying to block people getting into the UK on those small boats. Mm -hmm. when they've come across the channel and miles and miles and suffered real hardships and near-death experiences and we just want to turn them around and send them away yes that gets my goat that really gets my goat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that feels more adult yes 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 and when we're coming from that triggered place mm -hmm. we're less likely to be taken seriously and that's really hard that's really hard because it's coming from a strong place of need but if we can hold that child in ourselves and voice our feelings from a more adult place and actually be able to go up to Ian and say, Ian, would you please stop that right now? There's something important I've got to say. He'll hear me much better than jump out of his skin because I'm yelling at his back. <laughs> right, right, right. Are there times when you have done the work, Heather, where you feel you've you've grown that that child? who didn't feel safe, that child who felt um, blamed for everything when, you know, it's not the child's fault or responsibility. Is there a time after, or, you know, after you think you've taken the time to grow yourself up, to be with your adult self, to be with your higher adult self, is there a time that we tend to fall back to those childlike, childhood childish experiences and feelings that affect us in the present yes that those sorts of things that i was just talking about if there will be things that mirror key situations when we were young that that make us feel little again yeah and what do we do when that egg happens so we do the feelings and needs and we try to get into our adult self. Um, we, we need to, if we are, we've, we've probably given some power. I'm going to do this to the, the big authority figure who's up here. I hope my hand isn't disappearing in the, the background. You're perfect. You're perfect. If we're looking up from a, a little child self down here, then we're in a, a low position and they're in a high position. So we can get triggered by any sort of authority figure who is neglecting or uh, we might perceive as a threat. So it can be people like, I don't know, doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. uh, bank managers mm -hmm. that, that are still, that things of the government departments that still have power over us. Mm -hmm. Police, particularly, you know, we've all got that with police. Um, but they do actually have power, so they can make us feel smaller. So we need to try and stay in our adult selves with them. Mm -hmm. I'm loving this. I am really loving this. Let me ask you the 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 hot button question that I know many women want answers to. How do you call in your one? How do you love? How do you call in your love? And how do you know that that love is your love? And if you already have a partner, how do you ensure that your partnership, your relationship is more loving, more fulfilling? You have no need to dispense with a relationship or with your partner. 
how 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 do we call in the one with a partner we already have and how do we call in the the partner um that we don't yet have who is not physically there okay and, so we got two big questions there yes. <laughs> that's not a red button that's a whole ring of them okay how do you call in your one so you set the intention you create the vision and you do your work with your child self. And then you go about looking for him. When you feel most empowered, you might have a few practice relationships first for the, the new pieces of growth to stretch and grow a bit further. Mm -hmm. um, I would get a coach. It doesn't have to be me. There are lots of us, Catherine Woodward Thomas coaches all across the world um, in every time zone. That's great. Got a lot here in Europe and loads in America. If anybody wants a recommendation for America, just ask me and I'll I'll let you know who I would recommend. Um, so you need to get the support because you can't shift this identity, this child identity on your own. Because of the protective piece, yes. your, your, your self-protection won't want to let go. So you need somebody's hand to hold while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. And then you can relax and really call him in or call her in. Yeah. You know? Yes, 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 yes. And as you're doing that, you don't let go of your coach. Mm -hmm. You keep your coach so that they can go through those things with you. So if you have, there's bound to be hiccups, you know, breakdowns in communication, people who aren't quite the right fit, mm -hmm. uh, people who look like they're the right fit. And then you discover actually they live in Australia most of the time and you live in the UK. You know, there's all that. And um, that, that's the principle. You just have to do it, you know, just have to do it and dedicate yourself to it. Don't do it half-heartedly. Right. And you don't have to do it hard either. No, 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 no. Because just... you know, you know that out in the world, out in the ethers, we've all heard, well, love hurts. Or if you want it badly enough, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be hard. You know, you have to buckle down and, you know, put in the grit and the grind. You're, you're gonna, in, in my country where I'm from, Jamaica, uh, we have a say, teeth and tongue must meet. And if I say it in my mm. Jamaican uh, vernacular, it sounds like teeth and tongue must meet. Te teeth and tongue must meet. But I tell you something, Heather, if my teeth, and my tongue were meeting regularly. I really could not be doing this work of speaking. <laughs> be very sore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be hard. It just has to be supported. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and it, it can change on a dime. Yes. And the question I most ask people right at the beginning of the process, is there anybody in your realm that you think could be a possibility? Mm. And quite often people will say, no, no, no. But, oh, well, now you mention it. There's John. Yeah, mm. he seems to quite like me and I like him. But, well, mm, I don't know, you know. And that, that, so I ask people, you know, let's just listen to your inner wisdom. You know, what's what's good about John? What's attractive about John? Mm. And they'll go through it and they'll, they'll realise that what they've been doing is staying with the I am alone or I don't belong or yeah. I am invisible and not going there with their adult self. I had somebody that had known somebody for three years before they saw them. Mm. And they've been together now a year. Mm. I have somebody else whose partner sadly died several years ago and she's been looking for love ever since and has found somebody who she went to school with Mm. Who's been there, you know, watching her from afar for years, mm. cannot believe he's with this girl, you know, that he loved from afar so long ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just so it's so much more easy than you think. You see, I'm glad that you gave me those two examples because I was about to ask you um, if, of course, honoring persons, people's privacy, you know, are there women that you have worked with and some of the examples of the phenomenal results where they made a right about turn and began to embrace the opportunities that were sitting right in front of them. 
Well, if if you think Tasha is right out in the open, Tasha Chen, she came to speak on this program earlier, didn't she? Like a couple of years yes. back, I think. Our, yeah, money and, coach, our money coach. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I was her coach. Mm. She she tells this in the public domain. I'm not breaching confidence. Right. She did conscious uncoupling with me because she had quite a a complex set of circumstances with her ex-husband that really needed unpacking yes. and that empowered her then to do calling in the one yes. and as we know she got married last year to a man who's way beyond her wildest dreams i am lo that's a wonderful success story and if you are watching right now you've never heard of Tasha, Tasha Chen. She is a wealth and mindset money coach. Amazing. And every Monday morning, she gives of herself and her time in our money community. I'll drop the link in the comments and in this blurb so you can uh, connect and see the example. And yes, yeah, she does speak hugely. As a matter of fact, that's how we met because we met in that community. And I believe what I love about your presentation, my kitty cat wants all the attention and love that it has. <laughs> it's making noise in the background. That, 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 that is something else. But here we are where we, um, I'm listening to what you have to say in that community. And what I love it's just the ease and the calm and the normalcy of what you speak surrounding the business of love and embracing love. It's not la di da tiptoe through the tulips kind of thing where it's an impossibility if you don't do this or that or the other, but it's real. Just like how you'd say, you know, Heather, I'd really love to buy a pound of sugar. Mm. And you mm. say to me, you know what, Tauntlin? Uh, what kind of sugar you need? Cane sugar, mm -hmm. white sugar, uh, sugar to do icing. What? Well, let's determine what kind of sugar you need. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, how much sugar do you need? All right. Well, all you need to do, you can either order it online from your local store; they'll deliver for you, or you can take a trip over to the supermarket. Who knows? When you go over there, you might come across opportunities that you wouldn't have if you sat at home. So, I enjoyed. Every time you were to speak about the whole process of relating and relationships. But as we started out this chat today, we talked about the importance of starting with the inner, starting with us, putting us at the center of our own love lives and learning these love lessons as we go along. Is it too late for anyone? No. No, one of my colleagues got married at 76. I love that story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She and her partner are traveling the world. That is absolutely beautiful. Mm. So please, if you hear this right now, it's not too late. And you haven't made too many mistakes not to try again, not to be. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah, happens you, what happens, Heather? to a woman who discovers this love within herself and calls in the one, how does her life improve? Is it necessary? Is it necessary for her to even bother going through this experience? I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. Oops, you're on mute. I tell you why. The reason I ask is that People can be looking on and said, you know what? That's a great idea to try and find love and whatnot, but it takes too much work. I don't see how it will improve my life. I'm okay. I have these great group of friends. My family members are this, that, and the other. Um, um, do I even need to? Do I even need to? Uh, what happens to a woman who embraces that part of herself? Is right, what I got you. The, I mean, largely we are hardwired to seek relationship. But if you really are in your heart of hearts, truly happy being with your friends and your family, and you don't need a partner, don't have one. But I would also say, does that 
come? You need to check this out. Does that come from the expectation that having a partner will somehow diminish your life or take energy from you? And I want to say, you know, when we set the intention and we create that vision, the partner that you call in will be somebody that enhances your life, that gives you space to be who you are and adores you who you are. He likes your power. He likes your independence in the world. He wants to be more of himself with you and wants you to be more of yourself with him. I think that's a wonderful point to wrap on our conversation on this beautiful topic of love. And I believe that we ought to have some more conversations surrounding this, certainly. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> but I think that we receive so much love in these nuggets that you shared, speaking from your personal experience as a woman, from your personal experience as a therapist, from your personal experience as a life coach, from your experience of having success with our wonderful, beautiful Tasha and mm -hmm. other women indeed. So I'm thankful that you are able to share with us as we celebrate women, the center of all love in our world, really. Nobody has to give up themselves and their body for 10 months. I call it 10 months. For 10 months, just so another life or another few lives in the cases of twins and triplets and quadruplets. Mm. <laughs> Nobody else except women do this. And they yeah. do it amidst all odds. Everybody, no matter where they are in life, whether they don't know where the next half dime is coming from or half quarter, or if they're already a multi-billionaire and anywhere in between. We are a blessed group of people in the human race. And I know personally, I'm happy to be one half of the special, special set of folks running around this earth. And we're also thankful for the men who are too. Mm -hmm. And I am grateful for the men who support us as women. And I'm grateful for the women who appreciate the support of other women, other men, other folks in our world and life. In wrapping up, is there anything else you want to leave with us as we move on into this life of love? Mm. Hold on and stay open. Keep your heart open to possibility. Relax into it. Call him or her in. Thank you so much, Heather. Lots You're of very, very love to you. Mm. And may we continue, may we continue to see more and feel more and grow more. And certainly, we're going to put all the contact information right here in our post. Thank you again, Heather. Have Thank a you very much. Day.